Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this rainy, gloomy Tuesday. I actually like rain. Um, sometimes I get annoyed with rain, but mostly it just makes me want to curl up with a good book. I know you're shocked by that. Uh, instead of curling up with a good book, how about curling up with a good book interview, uh, in a podcast interview. You can curl up with a, a nice warm beverage and this interview that I have today with author Bob Brill. Bob is the author of um, several books, actually, but he what we're talking most about today is his Western series. It's called Lancer, Hero of the West, and then each book has um, the subtitle of um, The Prescott Affair or whatever city the book is set in that is um that's the subtitle so depending on the city that's the affair that you get which actually sounds kind of silly when i or not silly sounds a little odd when i say it like that all i was trying to say is that they they have a pattern to them so they're always um lancer hero of the west and then there's the prescott affair the los angeles affair the santa fe affair the el paso affair and so on and so forth and there are going to be 10 books in total he is working on book number six and let me go ahead and give you the description of the first one in the series because that's always a good place to start um when you are talking about a series so lancer is a good guy gun for hire in the 1880s who helps the those in need. He respects women and children, will work with the law if the law is honest, and only uses his lightning quick six shooter when needed. Brains before brawn, Lancer is a well-educated, mysterious gunman based in the bustling town of Tombstone. Friends with Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, his adventures take him all over the West. Well-traveled as well as educated, this former Union Army officer takes on injustice and has a good time doing it. So if you're a fan of Westerns, then this probably is a good book a book series for you to check out because you know that there will be 10 in the series. And that's always um, exciting to know that you have a good a good series to jump into and that there's many books in that series. Let's go ahead now and turn to the interview with Bob so he can tell you more about Lancer and the series in general. Hi, Bob. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Sarah. Good to be here. I am very glad to have you here. Um, We're here to talk about your uh, series that happens to be um, a Western series, which is fun. Mm -hmm. Before we get to that, though, um, if you could just start by sharing a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been uh, around for a long time, let's put it that way, <laughs> and uh, I've uh, I, I've won some awards as a newscaster. You know, uh, I've been basically uh, almost 50 years uh, in radio. That's been my uh, my main career. That's what always has paid the bills over the years. As a, I was a newscaster uh, starting way back in the early 70s, and when I first got into radio, and I've been in radio uh, pretty much ever since. Uh, although I've taken some time out to sell baseball cards, which is my other passion. But uh, radio's really good at it. I was a national correspondent for UPI Radio Network back in the 80s and 90s until UPI went away uh, as, a, as a radio network and as a wire service that it was. I grew up um, early in my life. I'm born and raised in Pittsburgh, so I'm a sports fan of all the Pittsburgh uh, fans. Go Steelers, uh, go Pirates, go Penguins. And it's uh, I, most of my life I've actually grown up in California, in Southern California, where I went to junior high, high school, and uh, played sports here. And then my radio career of it all over the Southwest, so from Texas to Oklahoma to New Mexico to 
uh, Arizona, and of course here in California, which is right now I'm a newscaster at one of the local um, uh, all news radio stations here in Los Angeles. All right. Thank you. That sounds like a really interesting and um, fun life that that we could have a whole conversation on on just oh, your yeah. career yeah. paths. <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 covered, uh, um, I've, been, I've been covering some of the top, the biggest stories uh, of the last uh, 40, 50 years. I really have everything uh, from, you know, interviewing presidents to uh, sports stars to actresses and athletes and you name it. Uh, it it's, been a, it's been a fun run. It certainly has. Not over yet. But it's um, it's been a real fun run. I always uh, uh, I did write one memoir called um, uh, Tales of My Baseball Youth, the Child of the '60s, which is basically about growing up in the '60s and playing baseball. And for, it's a relationship book. It's about friends, family, coaches, parents, you name it, uh, and how they everything evolved to, for me around the sport of baseball. And it, it was probably one of the most fun books I've ever had to sit down and write, and I only made one mistake that, uh, that I know of, so <laughs> I gave somebody <laughs> your wrong thing. But outside of that, you know, it's, it's things like that do happen. Uh, <laughs> fun. Um, well, we are uh, going to talk about your um, your series. It's the Lancer Hero of the West series. Um, can you talk a little bit about the series overall? Yeah, uh, the series, uh, basically, it took me a long time. I've written about 10 books now, in total. And uh, it, I always wanted to write a Western. But, you know, Western readers are very, very knowledgeable about the West, the Old West. And I just saw that it was daunting, and it took me a long time to decide to sit down and write one and, and where I wanted to go. And I decided, my, my father and I... Uh, my first book was dedicated to my father, and my father and I uh, used to sit and watch the 1950s and 60s TV westerns, of which there were myriad, uh, and I actually watch them today when I'm at, on the treadmill at the gym. Um, and they're just, you know, from the Lone Ranger to have their little travel to all these great western TV shows, because early TV, that's basically what it was easy to do, and everybody loved westerns. So I, I had a love for that. And uh, so what I decided to do is, uh, when I decided I wanted to write a Western, was I wanted to create a character that was a compilation that drew from a lot of those different TV characters, and then it had my own flair as well. And so what I did was I sat down and I, I created a character called Lancer, and he's uh, a mysterious, uh, has a mysterious background. And each book successively, you learn a little bit more about his background. And he's a good guy gunslinger for hire. He works out of Tombstone, that's his home base, although he's really from the East. He interacts with uh, real life, uh, real life um, legendary characters, Wyatt Earp, and, and every book starts out in Tombstone, so he interacts with Wyatt and, and Morgan and, and uh, Burge and, and uh, Doc Holliday and the bad guys, Johnny Ringo and, and uh, Ike Clanton and all those guys. And then I create some characters within that too, because he's a ladies man. He's a, good, he's a respecter of women, he's a respecter of kids. He has basically three rules, which he never states, but if you read the books, you understand that. Uh, first, um, he uses his brains first, his brawn second, meaning his fist. And then if he has to use the gun, you're dead. So it's not going to make any difference because uh, he's, he's an excellent <laughs> draw. And, you know. um, and he has a sweet tooth. Uh, so he um, always carries around um, uh, Turkish Delight, which is one of my favorites. And that's my contribution, my sweet tooth. And my biggest contribution, I guess. And, and basically, he is hired out of Tombstone to go solve crimes or do stuff, um, to, you know, work through problems that people are having in other parts of the country. And the first one took place in Prescott, Arizona. And mm -hmm. that happened to be, I chose Prescott because that's where I had my first radio job. And uh, I, 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 I liked Prescott. I just found that it was a great Western town that had a lot of heritage, and I also knew enough about it that I could, you know, wouldn't be too far off base. And then um, there's okay. been there's been five so far, and it, it's kind of this is going to get kind of a little bit confusing. Um, there's been five. There's been uh, Prescott, Los Angeles, um, Santa Fe, El Paso, and New Orleans. And I'm currently in the process of writing 
Broken Bow, which is Nebraska, which is number six, which will be out in um, uh, probably April. It'll be out by April for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have a new publisher, and my publisher wanted to start reissuing the books. So what we did was coming out January 7th, is the first Lancer as a reissue. It'll be it'll be at Barnes and Noble. Uh, that's our deadline date for Barnes and Noble is uh, January seventh. So uh, it'll debut there. And uh, it's it's it, there's only gonna be one change in the book. And uh, <laughs> I, I guess if if the books really take off and become this wonderful uh, giant you know um, whatever famous book series. Uh, the ones that are out now, the ones that you cannot buy anymore because I don't, we're going to take them down. But if you already have a copy of Lancer Hero of the West, the Prescott Affair, there's a mistake in it. And the mistake has been corrected for the reissue, which is coming out in January. And that mistake was a big one. Um, it uh, just so happens you never trust, sometimes you don't trust the editor. <laughs> oh, I do, I do love her. Um, it was a different editor than I have now. And uh, sometimes you just don't trust spell check because Doc Holliday yeah. spells the name with two L's. H-O-L-L-I-D-A-Y. Of course, the word holiday mm -hmm. for Christmas or whatever is one L. And I specifically wrote Doc Holliday with two L's. However, twice in the book, I used the word holiday to mean the holiday of which one L. And when I did a final take a spell check and I, I used, you know, word and where you could replace all of them. And I meant to replace the words that didn't get replaced. And I replaced the words that I weren't, weren't supposed to get replaced. So Doc Holliday's name shows up as H-O-L-1-L-I-D-A-Y in the first book. So if, uh, like I said, if these books become tremendously famous down the road somewhere, um, the first issues will be collector's items, the ones with mistakes. So those are going to be the valuable ones. <laughs> <laughs> and, nice. and right now, I'm, well, that's really. And I'm, I'm writing this this book, a new book I'm writing now won't be number six. It'll be inserted as number two. Uh, we we changed a little bit of, um, of the lead. Well, I didn't really change the lead into book three, but I did change the lead into book two. So the new book, which will be uh, out in April, will actually be a brand new book. It'll be the sixth one in the series. But actually, it'll be number two. And it really doesn't matter too much because they're, the books don't necessarily tie to each other. They're all standalone books. So, but just, you know, that's going to be a little confusing for folks. So. All right. Well, that is really exciting. Um, congratulations on that. You. you said that Lancer is a, a bit of a compilation of kind of Old West figures. Um, was there... A specific inspiration for him, or did he just kind of come together as a, as that compilation? I, I tried not to do um, one specific character, uh, although you know um, I think there's probably more of some than others. And I think uh, if you're a fan of those TV shows, uh, you would probably see more. Depending on who, which show you were a fan of, you may see more of one of those TV characters than another. You may see more of Josh Randall from Wanted Dead or Alive than you do of um, um, uh, Johnny Yuma as the Rebel. You may see more of Paladin and have kind of travel than you do of um, uh, the detective in Tales of the West. So, you know, you're gonna see, and you certainly see a little bit of the Lone Ranger in there as well. So, it, yeah, it's, um, it all depends. Yeah, You're, the reader will see something different from reader to reader. So I, I can't really say that it's any more than I, I tried to make it so it wasn't any more of one than another. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you get off on a track and, and uh, it may turn out that way. Mm -hmm. um, and what about him do you think will resonate with readers, especially readers I, of I, Westerns who are, I would imagine, have very specific images in their heads oh, of their yeah. heroes. Yeah, they do. Uh, it's not really a blood and guts book uh, or a series. Uh, I tried to stay away from that because I wanted it to be available uh, to juveniles as well as um, older adults. And so when I write my, these types of books, I write them so they can be read in on a six-hour plane ride from L.A. to New York. 
and you pick up the second, next one, and you read that one on the way back. Uh, I want you to be able to have it so you can pick it up at the airport and just read it on the way there. Um, so they all run about 200 pages. And the um, fact that uh, I, I think probably the most specific thing about them and about the character that people like is there's always a, a woman in, in the book somewhere like he has at least one incident with a woman. Uh, he's very respectful. He's obviously wealthy. And he's not your typical, he's not a dandy, he's, he, but he has, he embodies all the things that you would hope to have in a Western hero with the added fact that he's mysterious and you want to know more about his past, but he's not going to reveal that. Um, there's little bits and pieces. That, like I said, in each book, successive book, I reveal a little bit more about the past. And the 10th book, there's going to be 10 total. Um, I write about one a year. So when the 10th book comes around, I already know that's going to end up, I'm not going to tell you, but um, it's going to be a little <laughs> oh, bit come on. And, and no, no, I'd have to kill you if I did. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the last book, uh, you will know more. I, the whole history of Lancer will be revealed in the last book. And, but, uh, so I'm hoping that um, when people read the book, if they're fans of the series, uh, they would kind of guess, well, gee, I won't, did he do this? So then they end up finding, oh, golly, I, I knew that. I knew that's what, what, what Lancer was about, or I knew that about him, or darn, I didn't run. I, I think that one caught me by surprise. You know, so that's kind of where I'm going with it. And um, the, the tenth book, I, I, I've already picked the city, and I will tell you this. There is something in one of the previous books uh, that will indicate why the last one happens in that particular city. But I won't tell you what the city is, so or that will give too much away. Okay. But yeah, it, it, it's yeah. Gonna, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, like I said the last one's already laid out in my mind, um, more, even more than I haven't picked the other three cities that I haven't written about yet. Um, Broken Bow is the the newest one, and, and that's uh, up in Nebraska, which is a little farther out of the, of the extent of the territory Rob is taking. Mainly he deals with the mm -hmm. from probably that up and down line from Nebraska West. We're going to go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the more famous or possibly infamous characters that Bob includes in this series. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I'm speaking today with author Bob Brill about his Lancer, Hero of the West series. Before the break, we were talking about some of the uh, towns uh, or cities or places that Lancer travels in this series. And now we're going to talk about um, some of the other... Uh, very well known characters that pop up in this series. You mentioned that you include characters like Wyatt Earp and um, mm. Virgil Earp and Doc Holliday. How was that writing characters that are they're really, you know, they're well, they're I don't know if they're so well known, but they're um, the, their caricatures are kind of so well known. How was it writing uh, fictionalized version of, versions of those characters? Well, the reason. It's easy enough to write is you hit the nail on the head. They're fictionalized characters. They're legendary characters. And the cool thing about it is most of what we know about Wyatt Earp and Virgil Earp, they wrote themselves. So you know they lied. <laughs> you know they mm -hmm. made a thing of it. And, and, you know, through movies and, and TV series and books and, and just, the you know, it, it's the old story of 
Um, you know, person A tells person B a story, and he tells the person C, and it changes to person D. By the time you get to person 10, it's not even the same story. And so right. it's easy enough to take advantage of that. And there's the, usually the entire first chapter uh, deals with his communications and dealing with the characters of Tombstone. And then he, by chapter two, he's off on his way to the assignment that he's taking, whether it's El Paso or, or uh, Broken Bow or Los Angeles or wherever. And the story picks up from there. And you really kind of leave Tombstone and his characters behind. Occasionally, at the end of the book, he'll come back to El Paso. I mean, to uh, Tombstone, excuse me. And um, there'll be a little interaction. And in a couple of books, uh, there is a pickup. There is a correlation between the gunfight at the OK Corral, which he's not there for. He leaves the night before, and he comes back. Uh, in this, the next book, he is uh, at the end of the trial of um, Wyatt Earp and his brothers for the killings that took place at the OK Corral. So that's the only connection where two books kind of um, correlate. But uh, that's 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 an exception to, to the series, and I I wanted to do that because you know they were only there from the early 1880s. They weren't there for the entire 1880s. So uh, the the adventures take place all 1880 to about 1882, 83, and um, then you know there'll be one book that'll take place after that. But uh, that, that's kind of where it is. But it was kind of easy because I, I really liked the fact that. Um, you know, everybody, I think, has Kurt Russell in their head as uh, Wyatt Earp and Sam Elliott as uh, Virgil Earp uh, and Bill Paxton as uh, possibly as uh, uh, Morgan Earp, and, you know, for the movie Tombstone, because that's the most positive movie. Mm-hmm. If you go to Tombstone, which I did last year, um, all the pictures, well, not all of them, the majority of pictures, and even the billboards outside of town leading into town, showing wider, it's Kurt Russell. It is definitely Kurt Russell's face, you know? And I mean, they may change a little bit. I don't know if they got his permission to do it or what, but there is so much Kurt Russell. It's like, you know, that town. And so, you know, that's ingrained in everybody's mind. So I, I kind of, in a way, have to kind of play off that a little bit uh, as well, just for familiarity. And uh, I, I, cause you know, I mean, White Earth's been portrayed in so many, movies and books over the years. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's just been um, strange. I mean, um, who was Victor Mature played Doc Hol- Holliday, and there was nothing that they were alike in the film and Doc Holliday. So, but uh, it, it, it was fun, and it is fun, right? Uh, it's one of the things I really kind of get into when I'm writing uh, uh, these books. Well, I definitely had um, Val Kilmer in my head. <laughs> <laughs> whenever Doc <laughs> Holiday was mentioned. So uh, I understand yep. where you're coming from. <laughs> well, the interesting um, thing about a long time is, to... is, is the interesting thing about uh, uh, having Val Kilmer there is, you know, that was probably the greatest role he ever played, the, the best job of acting that he ever did. And so everybody remembers Val Kilmer. And like you mentioned, you included, and I do too. And, and you have to kind of figure out, is it a southern accent, is it a New England accent, is it an eastern accent? You know, because everybody played him differently. And so I kind of I kind of mix it in a little bit. And my whole thing is, um, you'll never see the face of Lancer on the cover of my books. So there's two things um, I require. Number one, his face is never shown because I want the reader to imagine who that character is through the writing and their interpretation of my writing. And the other thing is there's always a holster, but no gun. There's bullets, but no gun. And that's to signify that really Lancer is a man of nonviolence. Uh, he, he only uses that if he has to. And he will, you know, he's, a, he's pretty much a lawman, but he's not a law and not an official lawman. But he solves crimes and everything. But he never wants to use the gun. And I kind of ride him. You know, it's like, I don't want to see the gun used. But there's always a shootout at the end because it's a Western. So uh, mm-hmm. sometimes it, it has to happen. So, but yeah, so those two things uh, are my requirements. Uh, and we went to uh, publishing covers and things like that. 
So how much research do you do for each book? Research is interesting in today, uh, when you're writing today, because first of all, um, your the internet is so helpful as far as like when I chose Broken Bow, actually I was looking for the story that I'm telling. Uh, I wanted a, a town uh, in western Nebraska because it sort of leads into Wyoming, the, the story. And I can tell you that this, this book has a little bit of Cal Kate in it, which um, her name was Emily Watson in the life that she was on as Cal Kate. So it's a little bit more um, where that the next book's going. Um, but uh, I was looking for a town. I looked for off and on for about a year, uh, trying to figure out a town in western Nebraska. And I, of course, you have, if you're going to do a town, you kind of have to have it incorporated by 1880 or 1879 in that era. So there were a lot of towns that I could have chosen that were bigger than Broken Bow, except they weren't incorporated until like 1890. So, you know, if you write a book about that has to be centered in a town or a city, and the people in that town or city happen to read it or hear about it, you get a hit, get some real flack about it. And so that's mm -hmm. one of the things. And the internet is extremely helpful for that. I mean, um, uh, I was able to, you know, just you know, use Google and, and find out you know, a ton of stuff. And a lot of stuff is done um, in this type of book uh, as far as research. It's mainly uh, two things, uh, the locations and things that happened or were available at that particular time. When you're writing history, um, even if it's faux history, so to speak, or literary history, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for instance, in the El Paso book, he had to take the train part of the way. Well, I had to figure out and find out what trains were available, what rail lines were actually in existence at that particular time. I couldn't say he took the train if there were no rail lines until five years after that. So uh, that, again, uh, there's great uh, um, information online, uh, actual documents, and I think that's kind of where the most of my research comes from. A lot of it is, you know, just uh, stories that I know is, I know the story I want to write, and then I create it uh, from there. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, there's other things. Like I had just the other day, I had to find out what the price of beef was. You know, you sell a cow, uh, you sell a cattle herd because the book's about rustling. Um, at, in 1881, well, you know, 15, 20 years ago, to find out what the price of cattle was in 1881 in western Nebraska would have spent a lot of time at the library and doing other research and sending letters, and the process would take forever. I had it right. in wow. six minutes. Six minutes, maybe. That 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 that's that's a long time. <laughs> you know? So uh, <laughs> the documentation. Not, I mean, it's it's just that easy to find out that kind of information when you're writing historical um, novels. Really interesting. Um, just not something that I ever thought that I would need to look up. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you didn't either. Um, I you know it came to me as as, as I was writing. It's like you know crap. What was it? If, if there's if the rustlers are stealing cattle to resell, what would be the price that they could sell it below market value? Since they're selling, they're selling stolen cattle, it doesn't matter what they, if they sold it for a dollar, they're making money. But if cattle, I think cattle at the time was forty bucks a head, um, mm. and so they could sell it for twenty five dollars a head if they stole it and, and make a ton of money. Well, how much money do they have to make in this particular story? Well. You had to make ten thousand dollars for the people they're sharing it with. So how many cow, how many cows did they have to steal? And I had to go back and change that once I wrote it because oh, no, it doesn't. Well, the numbers don't work. How many cows did they have to steal? At what price? And what take them to market and getting them to market? And how many people were involved? But they had to split the money, you know. And uh, so yeah, no, it was something I didn't figure out when I started writing the book. I said, okay, uh, this is something I got to figure out. And again. It took me less than six minutes to, to get that information. That's amazing. 
I'm just going to say it again. That's amazing. It's it's amazing what you can find on the internet and how much easier it can make research, especially for a historical series like this one. Time for our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be speaking a little bit about some of Bob's other novels, some of his other writings. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, Bob was talking about uh, the amazing research facts that you can, or th- research that you can do on the internet and the interesting facts you can find when doing so. We're now going to talk about some of Bob's other work. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview. Um, I, I know you've been, you've been writing for a long time. In addition to the Lancer books, are there any other of your books that you would like to highlight during oh, yeah. our conversation? Um, sure. There's, you know, um, the, uh, I mentioned earlier in our conversation about uh, Tales of My Baseball Youth, a child of the 60s. That's probably my favorite book. But uh, others I've written, uh, I just wrote uh, a, pam- a pamphlet, uh, actually, a 35-page book. You can find it online or at my website, uh, bobgrillbooks.com. Uh, and it's about uh, golfing and baseball but using an old method that was taught um, by one of the major league baseball teams uh, as far as using uh, how, to, how to refocus your, your hitting, whether it's a golf stroke or whether it's a baseball stroke. Uh, I wrote a book called um, El Cabo, which uh, is a terrorist novel. It's an FBI chase novel. Uh, basically, it takes place 25 years after 9-11. And it's about uh, Afghani grandsons of Afghani warlords who were born and raised in the United States who want to honor Osama bin Laden and honor their grandfathers by overthrowing the United States and establishing um, a uh, their own country here. Uh, and it, uh, it it's a it's a probably one of the best books I've written. And, and it's called um, El Kabul, uh Homegrown Terrorist. And uh, get a lot of when people read it, they it's usually kind of terrifying, but they they it, it's kind of logical as well. And then I wrote a book um, called uh, No Barrier, which is a nonfiction book. It's uh, about uh, how the bad things that the internet has done. It's called actually the title is No Barrier: How the Internet Destroyed the World Economy and How the Everything Changed for economics around the world, whether you're a low-paid job or a high-paid job or an investor or a government employee in Nigeria. Um, you know, all the things that change, and the, the book is was outdated almost two weeks after it was printed, although it's still great information and a great story about uh, all the things. I, I talked to economists and um, uh, uh some reporters and people who deal with the economy around the world at the UN. And it really is a, it's a fascinating look at what the internet has done and how it's changed. And now it's taken away jobs that will never come back and not necessarily for the better. And there's a lot of problems that I don't even get in to the um, uh, meddling and um, politics. There's sort of a hint of it there, but 
Uh, it's it's just all the things. I, I wrote it a few years ago. And let's see what else have I written. Uh, oh, of course, my very first book was Fan Letters to a Stripper, a Patty Wagon Tale. This is a coffee table biography of uh, uh, Patty Wagon, who was uh, a burlesque queen in the 40s, 50s, early 60s, who married a major league baseball player by the name of Don Rudolph. He pitched for the, uh, among other teams, he pitched for the Washington Senators and uh, died prematurely. So, and that that's a large coffee table format book, uh, printed by Schiffer Publishing back in uh, 2009. I, I actually saw that book on your website and uh, the name definitely gets your attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's I have to admit. Because, uh, I've written a screenplay on that, and you know, we're still shopping that, called Major League Stripper. And um, um, you know, I've written 18 screenplays and pilots that uh, we're still shopping and we're still working on uh, with uh, uh, trying to get uh, them sold. And uh, that was my passion script. So that, that's the one... You know, people ask me, say, well, do you mind if there are rewrites? I said, no, there's no, I don't mind. But when it comes to that script, I've got to have more creative control because I have some promises that I made to family members that I want to keep. But uh, not only that, it's a, it's, it's a story that's a great love story. Uh, it's a story about changing moralities um, in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s. And it covers about an 18-year period, the 20 years. It, it's just a fascinating story about these two people who who fell in love uh, and through all the turmoil of uh, the changing times, uh, one being, I mean, there was a period, uh, he, he was married to a stripper and they wanted to keep it quiet because of Major League Baseball's rules. But when he went to the minor, back to the minor leagues, the minor league owners used her to promote Minor League Baseball. So uh, it, it really is a fascinating story. And it's mainly told um, through fan letters. I pretty much own the estate. And we have hundreds of fan letters. We I think we use like 80 of them. Uh, we just reprinted them. The letters that people wrote to her. And we, you know, photographs, 150 odd photographs plus the letters. So we just printed the letters. And if they had a phone number or an address, it was on there. And we left it in there. And uh, we figured, you know, at that point, most of the letters were from the mid to late 50s. And the guys that wrote those letters were either dead or, you know, wouldn't, or moved away or wouldn't care. We were hoping to find a congressman or something that wrote her a letter, but uh, we didn't find any of those. So. I know that you also have a podcast. Uh, can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, I actually have two of them. Uh, we have one called uh, Interesting People with Bob Brill, where uh, we interview interesting people more, not so much interesting people, we get to uh, interview people with interesting jobs. And we look at it as every job is interesting, whether it's a dirty job or whether it's a clean job or whether, you know, you own a, um, we interviewed um, the folks who own Rennie's uh, uh, Moving and Storage. So they've been around for 83 years. So who can say they've been around for 83 years? They were the movie company of the stars. They moved Ronald Reagan from Sacramento to the White House. I mean, so they had great stories about all this stuff. But and we interview people about the, just, you know, the kind of work they do and uh, everything, all kinds of stuff. Publicity, we have a world championship wrestler and a Chinese actress, you know. So there's that one. But the, the one we're most concentrated on now uh, is, uh, it's called Kramer and Brill, a fantasy football podcast. And of course, as you know, uh, fantasy football is a $3 billion a year industry. And uh, Eric Kramer, who's my friend and colleague, and co-host on the show uh, is a former NFL quarterback, the quarterback of the Lions, the Bears, the Chargers, uh, identifies mostly with the Bears. And so uh, I'm a big Steeler fan, but I've also, I've been playing fantasy sports since uh, for about 50 years since I was a kid. And um, even before the current type fantasy football existed, we played fantasy sports. And uh, we do it every Tuesday, it's good for a week. And what we do is we uh, preview uh, we look back at the week and the predictions we made, and then we give hints and helps about uh, players you should have in your lineup this week. And then we do game by game, go over the players that you know we believe they're going to do and how valuable or what they're not going to do for that week's game for your fantasy football. And now it's right now we're at a time when 
fantasy football playoffs are taking place. So it's kind of a, uh, uh, it's really an intense time with the waiver wire and stuff. But, uh, and um, those you can find uh, on Ellipson, on iTunes.com, uh, uh, um, radio.com, the uh, mobile app, uh, Stitcher, uh, pretty much anywhere where you find your podcast. Or uh, for the fantasy football, and just our, our, our um, website, the easiest place to go, uh, Kramer with a K, Kramerandbrill.com. And right there at the top of the podcast, it says click here for our latest podcast, or you go to the podcast page. You don't want to take you right to it. So it, it's really simple. Uh, and mainly because there's probably about a thousand podcasts on fantasy football. So I don't even tell people to go to radio.com or any place. Go to our website. It's right there. The easiest pie. You don't have to do any research. Just go there. Kramerandgrill.com. And then, of course, my books you can find on, um, on Bob, bobbrillbooks.com. January 7th is the reissue of um, uh, Lancer, uh, the Prescott Affair. That's your here in the West. Right. Yep. All right. Thank you for that. Um, do you have, you've had um, quite the, quite the uh, career and you've written in lots of different contexts. So do you have advice for aspiring authors? The biggest thing I can ever tell an author is to sit down and do it. You know, the biggest hurdle for anybody who wants to write, whether you're writing a book or you're writing you know, stuff for uh, like blogs or columns, because I write a weekly column too. I write a weekly baseball column called Baseball in the 1960s. And I always wanted to do it. And that's that's my era where I'm most familiar, uh, where I grew up. I love the 60s as far as baseball is concerned. And there are myriad stories to write about. And the biggest hurdle I had was just choosing not what to write, but with the theme I wanted to write and what I wanted to do. And once I sat down and I said, I'm just going to start writing, I developed a format in about 10 minutes where I wanted to be. And it's evolved uh, over the years where I'm editing video as well as links and things like that. But the biggest thing I can ever tell any writer is to just start, start doing it. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how good it is. Just do it. Because once you get into doing it, once you sit down, Carve out an hour, carve out 20 minutes, carve out whatever. If you physically start to write, you'll never stop. My biggest problem, as far as my writing is concerned, is I can't stop. <laughs> I literally can't. You know, I mean, I've got usually four or five projects that I'm working on, whether it's a couple of screenplays, a couple of books, whatever. I'm in my column, my weekly column, and podcast. I'm doing so many things. Sometimes I'm overdoing, and, you know, I, I need to refocus. And uh, so the biggest thing I, I could tell writers is you have to just start writing because once you do, you know, and don't worry about you know, writing an hour a day or a half hour a day. Just write. Just write. When you're done, stop. You know, and when you feel like starting again, start again. You know, and then once you figure out where you're going and what you want to do, you'll figure out a discipline and you'll work out a discipline for yourself that you'll be able to then structure into books or columns or articles or whatever you're going to write or, you know, podcasts or, or, you know, YouTube stuff, whatever. When you take the time to read, I assume you like to read Westerns, but uh, what are your favorite authors and genres? Uh, actually, my favorite genre to read uh, is I love reading books about presidents, uh, U.S. presidents. And I would tell you that Probably the last five books I've read in my life are all books about presidents. Uh, I'm cur currently reading the, um, uh, the book on uh, Donald Trump by Bob Woodward called Fear. Uh, but uh, probably one of the um, better books I read was uh, by an author by the name of Brian Kilby, uh, which is the story of Andrew Jackson, which was uh, very fascinating. And um, uh, I, I think that's kind of where I like to read. I like to read about the Civil War. And I think when I was growing up, uh, I read a lot about the Civil War. And uh, another author I really like, and someone I think may have uh, interviewed, is um, Jimmy Christina. Uh, and Jimmy actually is a friend of mine. I like reading his stuff. But he wrote uh, Jonah Blue, uh, which I have not read. And if he hears this, he'll kind of slap me. Uh, but I read uh, his book called Jefferson's Chance, which is fantastic. It is a Western. Uh, Jimmy writes Westerns, too. But um, I think uh, probably... Uh, my my favorite stuff to read really is uh, 
stories about U.S. presidents. So I just find it fascinating because uh, I love American history, and um, that's kind of uh, you know where I uh, I've always been a history buff, and uh, I, I think that that's kind of uh, where my heart has always been when it comes to reading and and uh, I, I can't even tell you if I have a, a favorite sports writer because I don't. Uh, and um, but yeah, as far as books go, I, it's U.S. presidents mainly. Nice. Yeah, I like. I actually like um, those types of books as well. Historical biography, you know, kind of that that genre. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've mentioned a couple of websites, um, but can you? Uh, you said Bob Brill Books is where people can find your books. Yeah. Um, how about yes, social books. media? Are you, are you um, on social media where people can find? Oh you? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Facebook. Uh, I have several Facebook sites, so several several Facebook pages. Um, Twitter, of course, uh, which is at Bob Brill. Uh, Instagram, the Bob Brill. Um, and uh, the easiest way. To find out anything about me, if you just Google Bob Rill and or Bob Rill reporter, uh, <laughs> those two things. If you Google Bob Rill, I come up 17 of the first 20 uh, items on Google. Uh, I'm not Bob Rill the bodybuilder, so get that picture out of your head when you see it. I'm not Bob Rill the drummer for Berlin, and I'm not uh, Bob Rill uh, the set uh, Oscar-winning set designer. Um, and that's why, if you like, you can find out more about me, uh, Bob Brill, reporter, and it'll tell you about uh, some of the things uh, that happened in my career. And everybody always wants to know about. Uh, everybody always kind of wants to know about um, uh, me getting beat up in the riots in uh, LA in 1992, which is another entire story. So uh, it's uh, yeah, the easiest way to find me just just Google me, and I'll come up. So, Bob, we have talked about um, several different things today, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you especially wanted to bring up about your writing or books or um, anything in, in general that we haven't talked about? I think well, we've pretty much covered it. Uh, we're looking forward to, you know, the uh, the launch of the reissue of Lancer, uh, Hero of the West, the Prescott Affair, which, uh, like I said, is uh, January 7th. That'll be on uh, bookstore shelves. And Barnes and Noble and uh, other booksellers, and uh, then coming up um, before April, right around April, we'll release uh, the the next book in the series, which will be the Broken Bow Affair, and we always do that uh, in time for the Santa Clarita uh, Cowboy Festival, which takes place uh, in here in LA County, and it's a big cowboy festival. That always takes place toward the end of April, and I always try to get the next book out before then because I I appear both days there. And we sell our books there, and uh, we sign them and do whatever uh, people want, and get a chance to meet some of the readers and, and uh, Western fans. So it's a great place for that. So it's usually the same weekend as the LA Times uh, Festival of Books, which I hope they're going to change it this year because we have a lot of competition for that. But yeah, so that, we'll be looking forward to that. If someone's in Southern California, they can check out that uh, the Santa Clarita Cowboy Festival. Uh, I don't think they've set a date. I know it's in April, but I'm not sure the date yet. So, and we usually do a Facebook blast for that and uh, let people know that, uh, you know, they can uh, check that out. And if uh, you are a baseball fan, please uh, check out um, baseballinthe1960s.com. That's all. You type that in and you'll find that when you Google me or, or whatever. And, uh, we're looking for more followers. That's, we've been writing that column for over two years and it is very, very popular. And uh, we get a lot of people that just really, really like it. So. Uh, that's kind of where we're going. And on my YouTube channel, if you want to check that out too, we're uh, adding more stuff to that all the time. Uh, we're working on a uh, direction on that. So you can go to the uh, Bob Grill YouTube channel and check that out too. So uh, hopefully uh, I'm out there pretty much everywhere. It won't be that hard to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess my, my last question for you is, do you sleep? You seem uh, very not busy. very often. <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> and part of uh, and part of the thing is, uh, and I, I'm not joking when I say not very often, uh, because uh, two nights a week, I work the overnight. So I'm on the air as a news anchor at uh, the radio station here in L.A. from midnight to five. I work from nine to five. We went at nine, a couple hours of prep. And then uh, from midnight to five, I'm on the air anchoring the news. 
two nights a week, and then I work uh, uh, usually a Saturday afternoon and sometimes another day during the week. So I average about three or four days a week. Uh, so my sleeping habits in the middle of the week are really, really <laughs> um, different. And uh, so when I'm not writing and I'm not working, uh, I'm sleeping, and when I'm not sleeping, I'm working. So it uh, does leave a, uh, a whole lot of time for a lot of social stuff, but uh, I'm finding out this year I'm actually turning things down because I've got too many social events, which is really kind of cool. You know, I, um, it's one of those years that my wife says, wow, we're turning down parties to go to. And I said, yeah, I know, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, I wouldn't have turned down a party at all. So, but uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 I've always, I've, uh, I've always kind of looked at it. I figured out my life one day. I said, you know, I guess what it is, is I figure out how much time I have during the day and then try to fill it. And uh, sometimes I have to kick back and, and smell the roses a little bit, say, okay, just kind of walk away for a little bit, and uh, which lasts for about two hours, and then I'm back to doing whatever I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Well, it's been fun. Thank you for uh, uh, having me on. I really enjoyed it. And uh, anytime we can talk about Lancer, I'm always up for it. So, because uh, it's, <laughs> it's a fun series to write, and I'm looking forward to, to big things. And one day, uh, Book number 10 will be done, and I'll find something else to do, But uh, which I think yeah. is smart. <laughs> it's <laughs> a fun you. series to read as well, so thank you. Thank you again to Bob Brill for joining me today to talk about his Lancer Hero of the West series. Um, as he said, there are five out. He's currently working on six. The first one will be re-released on January 7th, so that might be the perfect time to uh, start in on this series. Get to know Lancer as a character and get to hang out in the Old West with the likes of Wyatt and Virgil Earp and Doc Holliday and many more. So thank you to Bob. Thank you as always to you, my listeners. I so very much appreciate you. If you are a fan of this podcast, here's the part where I, I say, please help me out. <laughs> I would have loved it if you could, of course, follow us on social media. Of course, like us, follow us share our posts, retweet, do all that wonderful stuff. But also, if you could subscribe to this podcast, that would be amazing. And if you could give us a five-star review, that would be super duper amazing. I would so very much appreciate it. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. And I hope, you know, if it's rainy or if it's snowy or no matter what the weather is where you are, I hope you can find time and a comfortable space to curl up with a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Movie to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.